we just replaced the controller on the 2009 Skidoo MXZ 50th Anniversary Edition. And uh, what happens is over the summer, the thumb warmer button decided to pop off. They, uh, they do that all the time. They get weak, there's two springs in there, and it, bing, gone. And you can't use it without the button, so it's useless. I did find the button, tried to stick it back in, went for a trail ride, and we didn't get very far, and the button fell out again. So it's not something you can fix. The other thing is, without the spring, when you hit the button, it just kept going up, so you had to hit it the other way to shut it off. So it was kind of a pain in the butt. So it's always better to replace them. Now replacing, you go to a dealership and buy a new unit, that's not an issue, but it's very expensive. So I ended up looking around and I found, looking around for a used one, they're about 100 bucks used. Uh, the caveat is with the 2009 600, it has a little different plug on the end of it. This is what I've been told. So I ended up buying one from our, a recycler and he said, you just have to switch the pins in the wiring and and away we go. So I didn't know what he was talking about, so I went through a lot of trial and error and took this thing further apart than I needed to do. Really all you have to do is take apart the the hand controller, remove the wiring harness from the back of it, plug your old one in so you don't have to take anything else apart. And then when it comes to this connector, so this is your start button, it's a red, black and and white wire, you have to actually uh, find out what the polarity is that you're dealing with and I can see that in the switch and uh, and rewire it so you can see here that red is not red it's white and etc so stay have a look and I'll show you exactly what I did I'll cut out all the BS that uh, trial and error that I did to get this done and uh, hopefully this helps you so you can save some money by buying a used controller and just doing a simple rewire job on it hopefully that'll help free up some more sled cash for you and eliminate some of the headaches that I went through when I was trying to replace this because like I said I end up taking this thing up too far apart to get at the complete wiring harness under the console and I didn't even have to do that so it was a shame but I learned my lesson spent way much more time should have been a 15 minute job and I spent hours on it but hopefully you won't have to do that same thing and all is good okay anyway thanks for watching Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you, and uh, be sure to subscribe for more uh, helpful tips on maintaining your Bombardier or ski -Doo product. Just going to loosen off the brake so I can get in there. I'm also having a problem with the brake switch, that's why that's off. So. I realize if the brake doesn't work, sometimes those fall out, but in this case here, I've taken it off. You just lift off, just pop it off. You don't clip any wires. There's a heated hand grip right there. So I'll unplug with that, with the brake switch. Same, same circuit. We got to get underneath the console to get at these plugs, and apparently, on the 600, one of these is smaller, so we have to do some finagling with the wiring on it. Hopefully, not too bad. Two screws on each side, and one in the front. That'll slide out like that. Unhook the. Uh, Speedo. There's the headlights unplugged. There we go. There you go. There's the button right there you push in and that'll pull apart. Just like that. So now my wiring harness is free. I am going to have to pop that riser off. Might as well take her right off. That's good stuff. And all that garbage. Now you can see these cable, these plugs are pop right through. Just like that. They're totally different. 
Okay, so I had an old crap moment when I noticed that the connectors were totally different. But, inside, they're exactly the same. So I can unplug the old harness, plug it into the new controller, you pull this little piece back, and that'll pull off. Gently, remove those, just like that. There's my new switch assembly. So on the control handle, this plug is different. Look at here, if I pull out these three screws, that panel should come off. That's the connector right there. And that's identical in each of them. So I'm gonna pop these three screws and we should be good to go. Hang on. All right, so I unplugged this thinking I could just plug it right back into here. But then if you look, look at the connector down in there. See? Black, red's in the center, white's on the left. This one, the white and red are switched. So I don't really want to plug it in there and have it, you know, not operate properly. Because imagine these are polarized to mean something. So I've got these heat shrink tube connectors. I'm going to cut this off. Red to red, white to white, black to black. And then if that doesn't make it work, at least I can just cut the connectors and rewire it to make it work knowing what I've taken off here. This process has been a lot of trial and error and I just really want to make sure it's right. I only want to do this once. I think that'll work good. Look at that. I have been wrong once or twice before. Well, let's assume that this is going to work. This has been such a trial and error process. I hope I help somebody out there on the World Wide Web that is going to attempt to do this themselves because I can save you a lot of time in not taking that thing apart. That's just insane. You know, and it doesn't really matter what switch assembly you get because you're just taking that connector from the inside right here and you're re-plugging it in. You know, it doesn't... Uh, I wish I knew then what I know now. But I'll tell you, I'm getting pretty good at taking apart Rev XPs to do, get at headlights and stuff because I've done quite a few of them. Upgrading them to LED and temperature sensors and things like that. There. It's not going to win any beauty pageants, but it looks great to me. I had to go back and look at my video because I couldn't remember which connector went, went where, so I've marked black. So the black connector goes in here. Pretty genius of me, right? Yeah, plug the black in there like that. Pretty darn close anyway. Perfect. That's good. I'll hide under the cap. I think we've got everything there. I'm going to leave the cap off for now until we test it all. So we just have the lights and the, uh, the headlights to plug in and the so, starter button, is that what I rewired? Let's unplug it and see. So now that's unplugged, so we probably won't start. Yeah, it's dead. So I wonder if I rewire that the way the other one was, if we're golden. Let's try that. I'm just going to temporarily twist these up just to see if it works. So I'm going to flip the white and red. Okay, back, <clears throat> excuse me, back to this thing. So we've got it working with the old switch wired up. So I know it's not a problem with that. And it's, uh, this is the switch from inside. 
But what I did notice when I look at the pictures, and that's why I always take pictures and videos when these things, when I have them apart, is the wiring is totally wrong. This, uh, this black wire from the control switch, the new one, is actually the red wire on the old one in the same position. The, the red wire is white and the white is black so even when I tried to keep black common and switch the white and red which is what I thought the problem was it still didn't work so I think I think I'm golden if I uh, if I just flip this around again I'm just gonna do this temporary and then I'll figure out the wiring once I do it so the black <clears throat> the black wire from the new switch goes to the red wire on the old harness Do not want these things shorting out. The white wire on the new switch goes to the black wire on the old harness. And then finally we got the uh, the red the red wire of the new switch goes to the white wire on the old harness. And if the switch hasn't changed from this manufact from the date this was made to the new one, this <coughs> This really should fire right up. how you fix your controller a little bit of rewiring and we'll clean that up we'll put that riser back on and we're done get out and ride